On the motion tonight, this House believes New Labour has ruined Britain, I'd like to invite Ben Harris Quinney to open the debate for the proposition. Ben is the current chairman of the Bow Group, the former chairman of the Foreign Policy Research Committee, and a leading contributor to many national newspapers. Ben. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as the most experienced politician here this evening, I think it's only right that I begin proceedings. Um, I spent last night, in a purely platonic sense, with the daughter of the assassinated Cuban opposition leader, Osvaldo Paya. Until this month, the Cuban government had refused to allow Rosa Paya to leave the country, and she has since been travelling Europe trying to find leaders who will step up speak out and take action against the communist Cuban regime. She has thus far been unsuccessful in finding any. And she asked me, having been restricted in her knowledge of international affairs for many years, where have all the leaders gone? Where are the Reagans? Where are the Thatchers? My response was, in a metaphysical sense, buried under Anthony Giddens' patio. In Cuba, they kill leaders with strong voices of vision and principle. But in the United Kingdom, we now do far worse. We destroy them before they have a chance to become leaders. When I look at the decrepit legacy of Tony Blair and New Labour, the mess they left of the British economy, society, and a place in the world, by far the worst, far worse than any of that, is the politics of the third way, for which in Britain, New Labour were the architects and under whose vicious yoke we still live. Under New Labour's third way, vision, long-term strategy, and core ideologies were dead. The future of Western governments were indisputably focus groups, constant polling, and short-termist progressive politics. The homogenous mass of a weak political class couldn't resist telling the demos whatever they wanted to hear. All are equal under the European Union. Multiculturalism works. Large personal and national debt is a fact of life. Everyone should go to university. Everyone must own a home. Wars and failed states only happen in distant lands. Every nation can expect consistent growth. The boom will last forever. Clear political leadership, a genuine battle of ideas, true freedom of debate in Parliament and beyond were the first casualties of third-way politics. In the early millennium, their replacement with spin and political correctitude were barely noticed at first, and then heavily assuaged by a cult of individual consumerism and profligacy by debt that served as a sufficient distraction. Fifteen years later, from when this populist cause started to hurt, we stand where it has started to kill. Its depth and spread have been so comprehensive that removing third-way politics from our politics may be enough to kill it off altogether. Governed as we are by the heir to Blair, we are still very much living under new Labour's legacy. And the enforcement of the regime in media and politics is as rigid as ever and far more comprehensive and widespread than the Castro brothers could dream of. Political correctness sits astride fear and rejection of dynamic and principled debate. It is a tyranny of nothingness. But the lack of substance it offers a nation is increasingly realized and criticized by its citizenry. Grasping for any source of protest available. When the rare politician of character and authenticity does break through the white noise, whether we agree with them or not, we have begun to embrace them as a society with a great hunger and fascination. And when Boris Johnson and Nigel Farage appear to be the most authentic and genuine politicians in Britain, neither of whom with a voice in Parliament, the only conclusion must be that our politics has stalled and will not return to strength nationally until it passes from Blair's Britain. This lack of direction and leadership at the top of British politics is now manifesting itself with a dangerously divergent and discordant society, with at best a brittle coalition between top and bottom. This is perfectly exemplified by former Bow Group Chairman Sam Geemer's 2012 Newsnight appearance, 
in which he set out to investigate the lack of black and minority ethnic conservative voters. He was told by Bishop Joe Aldred, a black Birmingham church leader, that the community had been raised to vote Labour, but on social issues like gay marriage, where members of the community may have once considered voting conservative, the party have moved away. He was met with the response that all ethnic minorities had to understand that if they want equality themselves, they have to accept every other minority party's vision of equality. This was heard with blunt disdain. And who, Aldred, who found no party in British politics could adequately represent his community. The recent issue of gay marriage in British politics proved both symptom and poultice of New Labour's Britain. Rather than a society united by a progressive vision, we saw the Catholic Soho Church with an ever-growing Eastern European membership that once offered an open door for gay people to worship close its doors the week after the gay marriage vote. Of greater concern was the lack of engagement of the Muslim community in Britain, which, taken with the Catholic Church, may not seem significant, but on its own, the deafening silence in the Muslim community, I believe, is. One imam commentated that the moral code and the representation of the British Parliament had now fallen so far from the Muslim community that they had disregarded it, preferring to adhere to private community laws. Many, if not all of you, will no doubt be looking at me and wondering who I am. Who is this sitting next to Mitchell, Hitchens and Redwood? In the immortal words of my doppelganger, William Hague, some of them won't be here in 30 or 40 years. And perhaps I won't either. But for my generation, if our politics is to have any significance or longevity to UK citizens, our task, alongside anything else we do, whether it is to the left or whether it is to the right, must be to bring an end to the politics of the third way, the most poisonous legacy of new labour. Thank you.